everybody. This is Lisa Busan. It's been a long time since I've done an insight with Lisa Busan. I used to do a regular show and it's just been gone to the wayside, you know, with COVID and, and just everything else kind of going crazy, right? The world has blown up. So I stopped doing it for a little while just because it was getting overwhelming with all the, the uh, editing and all that junk. So here we are again. And it took a very special lady for me to open back up. Yes, it did. My guest today is Heather Wilson. And we met, what, three years ago now or two years ago now? Yeah, I think it's about three years ago. That's what I thought too. We were attending a class together. And we happened to be lucky enough to sit at the same table. And of course, we got giggling and got in all kinds of trouble. And it was wonderful. And <laughs> and yeah, and then I, that was the next summer or the next, well, I don't know what the hell. You're in Arizona, so I don't know what season it is. But I came to Arizona and I taught a mediumship class there and it was so much fun, of course. And so it was, it's cracking me up that Heather, you have this love of the ocean and of the beach. And because you're in Arizona, seriously, there's probably not a freaking drop of water in your whole state, right? So I, I don't know if that's the truth or not, but, <laughs> and I'm a water girl too. I'm a, water, a big time water girl. You know, whenever I'm upset or I'm bitching at God or whatever the case is, I go to the water. Luckily in Michigan, we have lots of that. But uh, yeah, so it's it's with great pleasure that I welcome you on the Insight Show. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. So we're talking today. Well, I think the impetus for this was the Surviving Death series that I saw. And one of the mediums on there, Joe Shile, was, or is, pardon me, a psychic artist and does artwork, uh, portraits of spirit people that he sees and that kind of thing. And I got to thinking, doesn't anyone who is creative channel in some way? Because I know for a fact, I used to do psychic art. I used to paint portraits and stuff like that of deceased loved ones. And I know that you are an altered reality, even though you might not be a media. So this is what pushed me forward thinking, because creative work is done with the left, probably with the right brain. And that's where mediumship begins or intuitive work begins. So when Heather started posting photos of her work, I thought there's, there's something here that we need to look at. There's just a part of this that I'm not gonna say was untapped, but maybe unpublished or unadvertised uh, or something like that, because this is such a neat way that spirit works with you. And I love it. I really Thank love you. It. Oh, yes. you're welcome. You're welcome. You know, it's funny because when I was painting, it was mostly acrylics and oils. What do you use? What's your medium? So I started off as a makeup artist. Right. So I did airbrushing and I did a, like, um, like chalks and pastels and stuff like that in high school and college and went to school to be a graphic artist. When the ad agency closed, I took up doing makeup. Wow. Um, I did full finishing and murals for years. So a lot of acrylics. And a couple of years ago, I kind of started setting aside the makeup artistry and doing more of the readings and the makeup or the mediumship and things like that. And now I'm doing oils and, um, it was just two years ago that I picked up oil painting for the first time. So it's been so, a fun journey. Yes. So Heather did start as an artist. Well, pardon me. She's an artist, a mermaid. Seriously, yes. this chick is a mermaid. I love that. <laughs> but she's also a spiritual medium. And that's how we met because we were in this what do you want, symposium or a workshop or whatever it was. Yeah, it was a three-day um, workshop. Yeah. And she uses her divine energy and her connection to source to help her paint her passion of the beach and of the ocean. So Heather's been drawing and painting most of her life. And after being a makeup artist, as she mentioned, for almost 20 years, she changed her brushes 
and the love for painting faces because isn't really that what doing all this is all about you're painting <laughs> right right so she it is. To oil painting on canvas and she's been loving it which i just i think that's such a great transition it's just so cool because truly it is like painting yeah so heather says and this is a good quote she now uses divine energy to help her paint her spirit guides give her or help her paint more freely and more from the heart. I love that. All of her paintings are infused with Reiki crystal energy so that they all have a calming effect on the, the owner, the viewer. And I can say, I can definitely see that because it's, your paintings are so flowy, right? They're just so flowy. It's just so cool. So let's back up a little bit. I'm going to have you do this now and at the end as well. How can the viewers get in contact with you? So they can find me on Facebook um, and it's Conscious Mermaid. Um, on Instagram, it's Conscious underscore Mermaid. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I'm on your, hey, your, uh, the immortal I'm like peacock. Peacock. The immortal peacock. I'm like, wait a second, which one? I'm like, I can see it. I can visualize it. <laughs> um, <laughs> they can find me through there. So um, they're welcome to email me or contact me through any of those means. So. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So you talked about transitioning, you know, when the when your business shifted. But what first got you interested in art? Like, when did this all begin? I mean, I went to school to be a graphic artist, um, which back then it was a lot of hand drawing and, you know, cut and paste and glue and a lot of stuff that really wasn't working to my benefit. Um, and when the ad agency went out of business, I took a job at Macy's in the cosmetics department. <laughs> and I know. And I worked behind the counter for years at different brands and traveled around the world as a makeup artist. Um, and it really came down to, I mean, over the years I was doing, you know, when the kids were growing up, it was faux finishing and doing the murals. And that was very big in the nineties and early two thousands. So did everybody's baby's room, did, you know, like all that kind of stuff, all the kids, all the faux finishing. And I got really burnt out, went back into makeup full time, like was doing great, again, traveling the world, doing amazing celebrities, doing great. And there was something that every meditation and every coach that I sat through their workshop, they'd have you do a meditation through it of where do you see yourself going? And I would always see this road that went and dead ended into a mesa and it took a sharp left turn. Hmm. And I'm like, okay, what is up with that? And they wouldn't show me what was beyond the left turn. And we went to Thailand and Cambodia about four years ago now. And it was such a spiritual up, up leveling. And I came home from that trip and worked for one of these intuitive coaches and it was a nightmare. And literally like it was a seven day job that I'm like, oh my God, like, please God, just get me through these next seven days without killing anybody, <laughs> uh, right? And, and it literally, the phone did not ring for makeup for a good six months. Oh my God. Now, mind you, I was working seven days a week and I was laughing because I literally heard I have hit the Mesa and I'm taking a left turn and my, oh my intuitive God. business exploded. So again, That's sometimes funny. God has to slam the door on us to make us realize we've got someplace else to go. And the oil paintings began really because a girlfriend just was like, Hey, I'm taking this class. I thought you might enjoy it. And it just felt so right. Mm -hmm. that I had to try it and it's been that. so much fun so very good that's it's really important to see how 
spirit can step in your life in the most unexpected ways, right? Most unexpected ways. Hi. And, oh, hello there. Bacon's like, hi. <laughs> Aw, baby, lay down. Which one was that? Because I remember that was the snuggle bug. That's bacon. Bacon, yes, bacon, yes. Because <laughs> I remember that was just the snuggler, just loved it, yes. He loves it when I'm doing readings. And uh -huh. so if I'm in here, he's like, oh, the energy's going to be on, and he really loves the energy. Ah, I love it. I okay. often thought about that because I don't have any pets. So I often thought about what happens when you're on with a client and all of a sudden your animal steps in like what do they do do they get into the zone or whatever i would imagine so he's funny because he will lay so still and be mm -hmm. so like just over there watching when the energy's not on or when when the energy's on sorry so when i'm doing a reading and the energy's going he doesn't move he very rarely says a peep, right? I love it. And he knows when the connection shut off and he comes up and that's, he was laughing because he's like, okay, I could, I can hear Lisa and my friend and he's like, <laughs> and your energy's not on. So that means I can come say hello. There you go. So, I love that. Yeah. So I truly don't believe that all of a sudden your intuition just kind of popped open. Hasn't there been like past experiences as a kid or anything? Honestly, I don't remember. Really? Okay. Um, I have blocked out so much of my childhood and my teen years. I see. And I, I was raised in a family that was very much, you're a liar, you make stuff up, make stuff up, da 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 da. So I don't know how much right. this this played into it and how yeah. much I was shut off. Yeah. Um, it really started about 15, well, about 20 years ago now, mm -hmm. where I really started realizing, wait a second, these conversations I'm having with the people in my makeup chair are not normal conversations right, right. <laughs> that I'm knowing way too much about them. Yeah. Well, you know, I say, I don't believe you just because I know how creative you are and how intuitive you are. And I, I, it's not that I don't believe in spontaneously opening Right. But knowing the type of person you are, there has to have been something, whether you mentioned it or not, or kept it to yourself, right? But your gift is so strong that there has to be something that was there, you know, and maybe you just didn't know to use it, but there was always something there. So, yeah. So we talked about your transitioning from makeup artist to going into painting so what changed from your pastels and stuff like that other art mediums to oil painting i think this class was just one of those it was an oil painting class but it was one of those that it was like finally a medium that i could like play with for a while right instead of like the acrylics or the pastels where you're like Pastels were so dirty, I, it drove me nuts. And acrylic dries so fast that you can't really work it. I mean, it's like a coloring book. Yeah. Um, and that's what I love about the oils is I can blend, I can play, I can smudge those lines and I can go in the next day yeah. and be like, oh, I messed this up, erase, erase. I love that. No, that's yeah. good. So. That's what I liked about oils too, is the ability to blend. Yeah. I'm going to change directions a little bit. So what type of readings are you doing now? I do mostly intuitive and mediumship. So I use the Oracle cards and usually start by asking a couple questions of like, where, where are they at now? Do these cards resonate with where you're at? Mm -hmm. So that I know I've connected with the right energy <laughs> and then who's coming through for them and what information spirit is giving for them. That's great. That's great. So, so you really allow spirit to direct you and, and you flow with it. So everybody, Heather is going to be doing some on air readings. And again, she doesn't know how it's going to turn out. No one does. Right. So she doesn't know where it's coming from. She just allows spirit to move her and work through her. 
and that's the way it is. So you let me know when you're ready to do a random reading and I'll just like mm, that one. How's whenever, that? Whenever, whenever we're good. Okay, well, let's try, let's, let's do this. Okay, um, can you see the, oh, somebody put their hand up right off the bat, Woohoo! Connie, let's <laughs> take her. Okay. I can't see any of the, I can't see any of the. You can't see the people, okay, gotcha. Okay, well, there we go. Oh, I've got hands up. Connie was the first person. Let's, Connie, I'm gonna promote you to panel, so let's make sure that your audio and video is on. There Hi, she is. Hi, Connie. There Thank she you. Is. Hi, Connie, nice to see you, sweetheart. <laughs> You too. Honey. Okay. So Heather, take it away, my dear. There is a definite female presence behind you. So, and it feels like a mom or an aunt. It's a, it's a next generation up. Um, is mom passed? Yes, a mom and a stepmom. Okay, because I'm like, I, it's funny because I was seeing mom, but it was kind of over. So, um, who's Thomas? Thomas? Is there a Thomas? I, not that I can think of. Because when I asked her name, she brought up Thomas. So that's, I'm like, okay. Um, and that could be for somebody else here, but. She's showing me, okay, did you grow up on a lake? Because she's, again, I'm seeing like waterfront. Yes, yes. And lots of, okay, because I'm like, am I seeing water or is it just because we've been talking about all the water? Um, and she's saying to, like, she's got a big black dog with her. Do you want me to affirm for you or? Yeah, please. Yes, we had a, we we had a black okay. lab. Okay, because I'm like, it is a big dog in her lap. Very good. Oh, that's nice. Did you just change jobs too, or what's the job change? I'm in between. I was laid off from three of my four jobs, and I'm I haven't worked at a year, so I'm looking for a bridge. So yeah, I would love to have insights. It is okay. It is coming in the next month, and it feels like it is a career. She's not saying it's a temporary job she's laughing that it is a it is a career she says you're not being clear enough with god source spirit whoever it is that you talk to really get clear on exactly what you're looking for in this new job because she's saying too where you were going wasn't quite working and she says you need to venture off this way okay, okay. so and it feels like we need to modernize where we were going. Does that make any okay. sense? Um, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm so not clear on where I'm going exactly as far as I know what I want to do for my, my work, but to make money, I might need to pick up whatever job. So yeah, I'm really not clear. No, and she's saying, again, like get really clear on what you want because if it is the hobby, she said, make a little bit of a turn from what you've been doing because you can do it full time. Mm, that's great. Okay. That's great. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so yeah. much, Connie. You're Thanks welcome. For tuning Thank in, you, honey. Connie. Thank yeah, you so much. That's Get great. It. All right. I'm going to put you back to attendees, sweetheart. So, getting back to the interview, when did you realize you were connecting to God or the source? Or when, and when that that energy started help you helping you to paint better, or started you started to channel that. Like when did you realize that link? Um, I was gonna say connecting to spirit was probably like twenty years ago. Realizing what it was was probably about fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think it was with this painting here was the first time that I really like sat and meditated before I did it. I draw mm -hmm. it all out. This one I did not draw out, but this one I drew out. And, um, but when I sit and meditate and really call in them to help guide me on what is the easiest path to get the finished look that I want. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, he pretty much happened in like eight hours. Wow. And this one was like two and a half, three hours. That's crazy. But it's one of those that once I let control over to them to guide me in how I paint, it just flows so much easier. And it's not the brain fighting with trying to figure out how to do it ego figuring out how to do it yes mm -hmm. would you think it's possible to have a client call you and say heather i want a one-of-a-kind piece will you paint one for me and then you would meditate and then get the image and then just flow with it is that how that could work i haven't tried it but very possibly mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to try. It would be very interesting to try. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you may get something beachy or oceany or God knows what, what you're going to find. Right. You just don't know because right. I guess it would all be divine order in what would be most meaningful, for the meaningful for the client. Right. You know, it could be and a dog. It could be a duck. It could be a rock with a word on it or whatever. You, you just don't know, right? Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. So hmm, you have to start thinking about that and let me know when you're doing it. I know. <laughs> well, and it's funny because it's, it's become really clear in the last like three months mm -hmm. that more of my paintings need to go like th these two. So this is one of my newest ones that I've just done. And Ooh. sorry for the sunlight spots on there. You, I don't know. That's um, nuts. But, that looks like a great big old snapshot. Oh, thank you. That um, is gorgeous. But I've been like really told by spirit that it really is about like giving back to the different fundraisers and the different donations. So all of the proceeds from these two are going to Sea Turtle Rescue. Wow. So, um, I, and that's, I feel like it really, we need to give back and bring more awareness to our environment and mm -hmm. The place I feel like I grew up in, even though I grew up in Arizona, um, I feel like in some past life I've lived in the ocean many times. So probably as a mermaid. Well, yeah, that's what it. It yeah. definitely feels that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's interesting too, you know, because I've always felt like, you know, neither one of us are rich, you know, but we have that internal need to give back or to pay it forward or whatever right mm -hmm. and you do it through art and I do it through sewing because I do little, right. little fidget quilts for Alzheimer's patients and things like that and so I just I find it interesting how we're both using our right brain in different ways to help other people you know and so it's it's not well for you it could be your job of course but we're using that to benefit humanity you know, are you the earth or whatever, you know, whatever. No, it's but it's again, the, like being thankful and grateful for where we are. I mean, especially this last year, if we haven't realized by now mm -hmm. how blessed we are, even if we're right. sitting at home, okay, we've got our health, we've got our kids, we've got a house over our head. So many people have lost jobs, et cetera. But at the same point, it's like, okay, be thankful for so much of what's around us and where we're at. Right. So, and it's about giving back and, and paying it forward, like yeah. you said. So, yeah, very cool. Well, hello, Bacon. <laughs> hello. Do you need to come say hi? Does she need some loving from you? Hello, baby. <laughs> what a sweetheart. I'm down, baby. So, thank you. I want to tell everybody about, do you still have all the turtles? We do. All we of have them? seven. We have seven tortoises. We got rid of all the babies. You got rid of the babies. Okay. Yeah. How many, how many adults did you have when I was there? There was only a couple, I think. Mm, we've got like six or seven. Okay. And all then right. we had 10 baby patch last year. Yes. So what did you do with the babies? We gave them to friends and sold them. And mm -hmm. they so. were adorable. Everybody, these little babies were like this big. <laughs> they were the cutest little things all over the place. I just love, oh. When you go into a painting and you're channeling, so before the, all that happens, do you preconceive or intuit an idea as to what you're going to paint? 
or is it like always a spur of the moment like ta-da sometimes not always mm -hmm. um like um like the same scene here i knew i wanted it to be a looking back on the island very serene very calm mm -hmm. but no i ended up pulling up like two or three different photos at, and i kept being told it has to be like way out in the water like keep going it needs to be further out and so it's about three different photos that are pieced together oh, um, okay and <laughs> <clears throat> and I went round and round about like, do we add texture to the water? Do we keep it? And I'm like, no, I loved, like when we were in Tahiti, it was very calm, very peaceful, mm -hmm. very clear water. And I'm like, I just want that image. I just want it to be about like the mountains and the sun and the, the water and being very clear, but no, not always. Okay. You know, so it, since you worked from photographs, once you're working then does spirit come in and direct your hand so like with this one it was it was more they showed me kind of what like what they were bringing through and i kind of went through and found it and it came together very easily okay very good um like some of these like this one i had planned of like this was the image i was going to do mm -hmm. um and same with this guy um but again, like I changed different features about it and I changed different things. Um, but it's one of those that once I get connected and once I've got it figured out, it's like, it right. just happens. It just, it, just, it just comes through, yeah. It just happens, that's great. And the one that's right behind you with the, with the uh, staircase or the, the pool. The pool? Yeah, the dimension is just, it, it's you. so neat. It's so neat because I will tell you as a, as an also artist or a past artist, the dimension is so important when you're looking at realism, right? Because it could really be screwed up bad time, you know, the pool could be like, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I love that. I love that one. That's so cool. That's Thank so cool. you. You're very welcome. So let's take another, let's do another reading. Um, you're going to connect in with Jan, so connect in with her name while she's getting promoted to panelist. So when were you in Tahiti? Five years ago. We were supposed to be there last year. And it did not happen, obviously. You know, so, I love traveling. We didn't do any traveling last year either, and it just... So yeah, we're hoping and praying that we can get back there in May. Thank you. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. How are you How doing? Are you? I'm doing well. Good, good. Heather, can I ask you a quick question? You can. You almost seem like you're doing stuff with your hands <laughs> while you're doing the readings. I am. Is I'm it, okay. Okay. I just, <laughs> I, I'm just, because I, I have a lot of squirrel moments. Um, and Lisa, <laughs> if I could ask you, while she's reading, are you picking up on anything that she, I mean, are you guys kind of vibing together in a um, sense? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, a little bit. Okay. I'm nosy. I'll, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> You're good. You can be you know, nosy all you want. <laughs> yeah. You, can be nosy all you, want. That you are super intuitive as well. Really? Yeah. Of course you are. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you get the gut feeling. Yes. What they're saying. Okay. So again, it's learning to listen to the signs and sh things that they're showing you. Uh. That's um, hard. No, but you pick up on coincidences. Yes. Yes. Okay. So again, it's learning to listen. And um it's your okay, did your dad have a um I don't know if it's just a mustache or a goatee? I'm no. picturing more the mustache. No facial hair on my dad. Who's the older gentleman with the mustache? Uh, I just had a brother-in-law that just passed yesterday <gasps> oh. who had a mustache. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's others, but that's the only one that comes to mind immediately because it's so fresh. Years ago. Ooh, listen to the deep voice. Who is that? Was that's my say, husband. <laughs> What a sexy voice. He should be on they the hear radio. You. He should be They're on saying radio. you have a sexy voice. 
did okay did he use it because i want to twist twist the mustache into like a handlebar mustache no no did, was there any handlebar mustaches on your end that you or could someone think of? who would just fiddle yeah did he play with it? You know what, George? Yeah, the one that just passed, I mean, he would occasionally, he have been, yeah. it wasn't a constant thing, but there was an occasional. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's laughing that he made it. So was there a question about him making it up there? I don't know. I don't know. It's possible. It's possible. So he's he's just laughing. He's like, please know I'm okay. I made it. Good, um, good. He laughs because your dad throws dimes your way. Do you find dimes quite often? Coins, yes, yes. Yeah. Different coins all over, yeah. They go straight into the, all the banks I have in my house, yeah. <laughs> and then I smell like um, not Cigarette smoke, it's more like a tobacco fragrance. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that would be both George, my him, and my dad. My dad for sure. But you smell tobacco around the house, and that's dad. Okay. So just know that that's his way of like, I'm here and saying hi. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, but George is laughing because he made it. Yeah, that's so. Uh, it was a rough go for him <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. So, thank good. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Jen, who is the lady who used to make the bread? My grandmother. Grandma, she's here too. She just wa she, she just wants to say hi. You just gave me goosebumps. Okay, well, all right. Thank well, you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> all right, sweetie. Thanks for Thank tuning you. in and listening. Thank you. I love it. Thanks. Thanks You're welcome. So, where do you see Heather? Where do you see yourself going from here with your artwork and or mediumship? Um, I love the mediumship and the intuitive just because it's a great way to give back and give clarity to people. Mm -hmm. um, it's that peace of mind of, or that confirmation that yes, you are hearing your loved ones. Right. Um, I think the hardest part for most people to accept is when we're talking to our loved ones on the other side, 99.99998% of the time, it's in our own voice. So it is really weird for most people because they're like, well, of course that would be something dad would say. Yeah. That is and so I'm like, important. no, that's dad. Yeah, that is so important for people to understand. I often tell clients that, or students, that it almost sounds like your own voice when you're reading silently to yourself. Yes. You know? So, yeah, I love and, that. So yeah, are you more clairvoyant or clairaudient or what's your clair? Um, definitely clairaudient. Um, clairvoyant in the fact that I see more photos. Like here? I see more images here mm -hmm. of what they are showing me. Right, right. Um, Clear cognizance more than anything is I just know things about people. Yeah. And that's, you know, I mean, it's just one of those that you, and since then it's all gotten mixed together. And I just mm -hmm. ask that I don't need to see people walking around my house or, you know, out in public. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Don't mind talking to them when I'm supposed to be talking to them, but when they just walk by me, it's like, yeah, it still shocks us, you know, it's unexpected. Yeah. So, so I'm going to pull up Michelle LaForm. She's got a couple questions in the question and answer, but I'm, we're, I'm going to leave this up to you. This has nothing to do with, like, I don't want you answering her questions unless that's what comes up from spirit, okay? So Michelle, I'm going to bring you on as a panelist. Make sure that your audio and your video are up and running, please. I just asked you to start your video. There you are, my sweet. And can you unmute yourself, please? Yes. There you are. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. So Hello. Heather, this is Michelle. Hello. Hello. Um, the biggest thing I'm getting around you is why do you feel so alone? Because my dad just left. 
And my mom's gone. I want to know they're okay. Because they're laughing. They're like, you are not alone. So are you the last person standing? Are you the last? Okay. I have two brothers, but I'm the last person standing. No, but they're saying that you feel very isolated. And I know COVID has made us feel very isolated, but they're like, you are not alone. And you talk to them all the time. The, the whole conversation before was meant for you um, about the, you know, when you talk to them and when you hear from them. I'm like, okay, who are we hearing? Um, yeah, I'm hearing something too. There's some kind of background. Something. It's okay. Wonder. It's okay. They're saying step into your power. So I don't know if it, again, that's the learning to lose, use your intuition and learning to listen to the messages they're sending you. Dad. <laughs> did you clean out dad's closet? No, yeah. Not yet. Okay. In the, I'm seeing, okay. What he's showing me is a flannel coat. <sighs> And there's something in the pocket that he wants you to find. Okay. And it feels like it's a fortune cookie message or some little like note, but it's going to mean something to you. Again, like anybody else would just pass it off. They're like, nope. Was he military? No. Why does he have that very stern feel to him? Because that's how he was. Okay. Because I'm like, I'm getting very stoic. Yeah. He apologizes for leaving you such a mess. So is the house a mess? No. I feel like it was more, I feel like it's more stuff that he's got to go through. You've got to go through than anything. It doesn't feel like it's a mess, but he's yeah. saying it's- There's a lot okay. to do. He's only been gone three weeks, so I don't know. It's, it's overwhelming and it's a lot, but he's saying, like, I get a definite, like, there is a lot of love there and breathe and, and as hard as it is, relish the moments as you go through the house. Because I feel like even though he didn't say it often, there is a lot of love and a lot of mementos that he's kept over the years. Yeah. You know I what, know. Michelle, my dad just passed last month as well. So I know those emotions and how difficult it is. Yeah. So we're sorry for your loss, my I'm dear. So Thank sorry, you. hon. Thank yeah, you. of Thank course. You. Of course. Thank, Thank you for so. joining us. All right. Take care, my dear. Thank Good you. Luck. It's not easy. No, it's not. It's not. Especially when it's your the like the last surviving, mm -hmm. the last surviving adult, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. Can you, Heather, give us your contact information once again? I can. So my email is, and I can put it in our Facebook chat or whatever too, is um, ConsciousMermaidHW at Gmail. And it's Conscious underscore Mermaid is my um, website as well as my Instagram. And good. then on Facebook, um, it's just under Heather Wilson. So very good. Very good. I'll do one more reading. Okay. Just one more. I'm only going to do one more and then we'll close up. I'm going to promote Cindy to panelist. I know. And I think it was, was it Carol that was the last one that was asking about what I do? The, the fidgeting and the playing with the cards is like my way of like getting the energy going. And yeah. I totally yeah. get it. Oh, there's Cindy. Yeah. Cindy Hi. Can you your oh, camera Cindy. down a little bit. There you are, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank Hi, you. Dear. Hi there. So good Hi. to see you both. How are Hi, you? Hi, Heather. Thank you. Um, they keep saying like, be ready for the windfall. Is what I keep hearing. Like I keep hearing, be ready for the windfall. So I don't know if it's We've, we've got stock that's coming up. We've got buy Powerball ticket. I don't know, something. They're laughing about- <laughs> I like, will be do ready that. <laughs> be ready for the windfall. Um, have, 
And again, I feel like don't let the last year get you down. So mm. I don't know what has been going on that we're like going into that darker place, but they're mm. saying, breathe through it, relax. The money's coming, step into that happiness. When you live out of joy, it very easily flows to you. As soon as we step into that fear, it like starts to back off and like we, we block the energy coming through. Does okay. that make any sense to you? Uh, yeah, well, I think COVID's gotten you know, being stuck at home and not in Florida where I usually go. Okay. <laughs> and and yeah. there, again, like go because you can quarantine, you can do this stuff. It does not mean we have to stay forever in our house. Um, right. <laughs> I'm laughing. Did you used to wear dresses all the time? Uh, I'm cleaning out my closet and most of what I'm getting rid of are dresses. <laughs> okay, I'm laughing because mom is like, you used to wear dresses all the time. And she's like, why don't you ever wear dresses anymore? So, okay. So I'm cracking up because she okay. is just laughing. She goes, you get the best legs. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. So, but then you the like, wants to wear pantyhose. Yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> Who said you have to wear pantyhose? That's what some dresses oh, are for. Come on. Yeah. 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 Spray <laughs> tan. Come on, there's all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> um, oh, how great. No, but that's mom's laughing because she's like, you've got great legs. Show them off. <laughs> um, and I think it's again too, like, get down to Florida, get down and have some fun, get down and enjoy the sun. Um, did they have a house down there too? Um, they, uh, they did, um, no, they, they did camping down there. Yes. Okay. Cause she's saying I used to go there all the time too. Yeah, she did. She, yeah. <laughs> the picture she's showing me, and I don't know if you guys know this reference, something about Mary Magda. No. Like Mother Mary? No. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's such an inappropriate movie. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> something about Mary was like early 2000s as a comedy but the gal oh. in the movie sat in her bathing suit on the chair with like the foil and like oh, just okay, okay. okay. And, that's, all right. and that's what your mom's making me feel like was that she would just sit out there with all the baby oil and slathered in it <laughs> like and just loved sitting out in the sun yeah yeah okay <laughs> I can and see that um, <laughs> she's cute I like her energy she's very she's not very talkative but very bubbly personality I love that so, I love uh, that yeah, yeah. She, she was, thanks for coming on sweetheart thank you very much she's both of you I appreciate it you're very <laughs> welcome it was, it was fun thank you my dear I'll look for that windfall <laughs> there you go let me know let us know sure. yeah, we'll do that. There. <laughs> yeah that's awesome very good Take care. Good luck. <laughs> All right. So do you, I know I um, asked you before, like in the past, do you have anything coming up that you're doing? Like any events or classes or anything like that that you're doing? When I get back from Tahiti in June, I've got some classes coming up on bringing out your intuition and how to tap in as you're doing your artwork. Nice. Um, and how to use artwork to listen to the messages they're giving us. I love that. So, Thank you so yeah. much. So we will have I'm, excited. I'm excited that you're teaching this because I don't know anyone who does. You know, that, that I know people who work with it, you know, like yourself mm -hmm. and a couple other mediums that I know, but I don't know anyone who actually teaches it. So I'm really glad that you're tapping into that. You know, and there's a lot of different ways that we can. Mm -hmm do artwork to bring out the messages um and if you think about it I mean when they tell you to like blind write or um I don't know what that is, is that what they call it what do they call it when you're like just getting the messages and you just write it down you close your eyes and you just write like automatic writing or automatic, automatic writing yeah. yeah um that's a that's one way too of like just learning to listen you may not be able to read your writing but it is funny how certain spirit guides will write in a different way or like 
things like that. The same goes with the drawing and the intuition right. when you start tapping into that. Um, and it really is funny how I can feel now the different spirit guides as they come through and help. So that's, that's what I try and bring through. Yeah. That's interesting, because you know, if you're working with different guides, each one of them would have their own personality, right? So yeah. I imagine that that's so cool. I really, that's neat. It's fun. So thank you, Heather, so much for sharing this time with us. I really appreciate it. So, so a little plug for me, um, I do have an eight-week mediumship intensive. It's a mediumship course coming up. Two weeks, April 6th through May 25th. And it's all levels as long as you understand the basics, like what an aura is, what a chakra is, what a spirit guide is. And then each person will have an opportunity to be one-on-one uh, -on -one taught or counseled from your own beginning level into the class. So, so you're, you are going to have people that are above you or people that are below you, but um, the individual attention will be there. Then I do have two classes coming up in Lilydale, New York, which is the oldest spiritualist camp in the United States. And this year, they're, they're coming into the 21st century, thank God. Um, the classes are offered in person and on Zoom, all right? If, if the instructor has approved the Zoom option, which mine are, which mine are. So you can sit in a comfy house in your pajamas or in your sweatsuit or wherever you are, right? Just don't come naked because we will see you. Um, yeah, so that's an option too. Those are, like I said, they're both um, the at very end of August. The first class is your five main spirit guides and we'll go over them and meet them and that kind of cool stuff. And then the second one is tracking your roots, which is a reincarnation past life exploration where mm. we'll be delving into a couple past lives, at least a couple past lives so that we can figure out what the hell's going on in this life. Mm -hmm. So mm. thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. I loved having you on. It was great. Thank you everybody for tuning in, for listening and joining in the conversation. All right. So Thanks, everybody, everybody have a great night. Mwah. Take care. Bye. -bye.